Right, so I have, of course, adapted Mark 1 into Mark 3 design. So we've cut it off the same way. But remember, this one uses the plywood backboard with the rim magnets. I really like this rim magnet arrangement. It's also much stiffer when it's like this, so it's likely to hold up into higher winds. So this is the one that I'm actually going to progress with to the testing phase. I did like the central motor, but it's not really me. I mean, this is more me. So I'm going to do that. Now, in the meantime, of course, I do have the Mark III made out of aluminium sheet, which is a little bit flimsy, but it's a test piece. However, again, going on the comments, awesome suggestions, and some of the guys really liked the blade design and wondered what it would be like if I took off that backing sheet and just had the blades. So while I'm working with this one, I'm also going to do that. Now, clearly what we need is a central post to hold the blades in, sh in size, take off the backing plate, get it up there. So the first thing to do is to make that central post. Now then, you might have wondered why quite a lot of things that we make here don't quite fit. The reason they don't quite fit is because um, we recycle as much as we possibly can. We, we make stuff out of things that we find, and because we make them out of things that we find, then they're always just a little bit off here and there, and we have to adapt them. Here's a good example. I'm kind of finished with this. It's not going to go to the bin. That's an awful lot of aluminium sitting right there. So what we'll do is we'll take what usable bits we can out of it. The big bits will cut up into other bits. There might be odd holes in things. Things might not quite fit. That sort of stuff. But that's going to happen when you're recycling things. And I just see it as all part of the, the challenge to overcome, so to speak. So these blades are going to be slightly smaller because once I get these blades off, I've got to put a bend in there so I can attach it to the central portion and so on. Anyway, let's get on and make that actual tube. So obviously we need to make a drum. And the easiest thing to do is take a flat piece of alley sheet and put it through the two-roll mill and that curves it up nicely. And you just keep passing it through until it goes round. I actually love this thing. <laughs> what you end up with is a beautiful curve. Now we'll just drill some holes, put some pop rivets in it and we've got our central cylinder. And there is the tube all done. As I say, I do love that machine because it's enabled you to make these beautifully round things. I ended up using um, coach screws actually, but I might replace those. I might whack those over or solder them on or glue them in or something like that. But anyway, that's my central tube. Obviously, it goes in the center and the blades attached to that. That's my tube and I've recovered the blades. Now, you might notice actually I'm wearing gloves. That's because I got sick to death of slicing my fingers. This is, um, it's like a knife blade, so it helps to wear gloves. Neat little trick, incidentally. So I don't really know where the centre of that is or how big it is. What I do is I just pop on a piece of paper, draw around it, fold it over in the light so I can see through onto the circle, line them up, crease it, do the same, so I get the centre of the circle. That really helps. And obviously I've done 45 degrees, then I pop that there, then I use a square and draw the line, because that is where the blades are going to attach. On the blades, I've done a two centimetre, two centimetre, gonna bend them over, and then we're gonna either screw them or pop rivet them onto there, and that's how the blades will be attached. Now it's got that end bit, because these blades are gonna wobble. I mean, they're 0.05 millimetre alley, so they don't have a lot of firmness. So what I'm gonna do is put an outer ring around there to help hold that thing together. Okay, <laughs> there's the a hoop fitted on, and I couldn't resist putting a 45 degree twist in these blades, actually. So now all I've gotta do, is put something here that I can attach that motor to, like a flange bracket or something like that. Then the motor will screw onto that bracket and then we can get out in the wind and see what it does. So we've got a little bit of a breeze and I've put both turbines out and you can see that the one with the back plane is actually working fine. The one without the back plane, it's really struggling to get going at these low wind speeds. Okay, so that was interesting. I think the unkind amongst us would say, what a waste of a day. Is I spent a day making this thing. We got it out there and it really did very little, hey? I disagree with that. I think there's so much to be learned from these kind of things, even when something doesn't work. I mean, we remade something, so we've got an awful lot more practice at making these structures. And if you've never made them before, practice is always good. Even if you've made them before, 
practice gets you better and better. So we had the practice of doing, we had the experience of making something, we got it into the wind, we tested out some suggestions, and sure, that had a kind of like reverse impact, and we found that it's not what to do, but in itself, I disagree it's a waste of time. I think there's a lot of valuable information that's come out of that that we can then use forward. I mean, one of the things that people seem to be thinking about in this is that cupping the blade would act like a Savonius wind turbine, and if we had it central, it would blow on the turbine and we'd just get the VAWT. I tend to disagree with that, and I think what's happening is that the wind is entering in here, and then it's acting like an impeller and getting forced out there is how I think it's working. Now, that means that the back plate is essential to it because this blade design, as a blade design in itself, will not function as a wind turbine, as we've just seen. So it is kind of confirming those ideas. That back plate's absolutely essential. If it's not there, the wind passes through and we're either relying on the drag or we're relying on the airfoil. And I certainly did not make a decent airfoil. So we got no turning. All of that supports what it is that we're actually doing on the main one. Now, of course, I do an awful lot of this stuff, but I don't always show the stuff that I'm doing, and so sometimes it doesn't actually register. Here, where I've taken up um, some of the suggestions on that, particularly on the back plate and the twist of the blades, we can see that those don't have the effect that we would have thought they would have. Now, there's always a difference between the theory of something and the practice of something. We can theorise... And we can use that as a guide for action. But whenever you act, there's a difference between that and the theory that you use to guide it. So you have to have flexibility. Now, I've suggested putting this on the wall, the, the uh, Mark III on the wall. I'm not 100% sure if that will work or not because of, you know, the action of air in a, in a um, flat plane when it hits like that. We'll have to see. There are going to be plenty of ideas about whether it forms a bubble, whether it forms a pressure area, whether it goes along the surface of the building, so we get it striking that way. I've heard both, actually, and we don't actually know. So what the thing to do, obviously, is test it. I mean, how long is it going to take me to hang it on the wall and see? Not very long. Half a day. So a lot of the times when you have a thought about something, it's always a good idea, or it is a good idea to give it a quick test, if you can, just to see if it'll actually do anything. So, it does seem at first glance that, you know, I've just spent a day making a video and the video's up here for you to watch and there's no real point to it. That might seem to be true. I disagree 100% with that. I think the suggestions were valuable, I think the test was valuable, and I think there's a lot to be learned from it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe and thank you very much for watching.